OCA. Ocala. Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. It's continuing to be a beautiful Thursday morning. No rain yet. It's only a 20% chance we're going to see rain today, so we're kind of hoping we have no rain. <laughs> we, we, yeah. We're happy. We have enough. We don't need any more. Uh, Michael Baumbach is in the studio. He is a nurse practitioner of urgent care at Family Care Specialists in Bellevue. And Karen Young is in the studio. She's the director of business development at Ocala Health and Ocala Regional Medical Center and West Marion Community Hospital. And Karen and Michael are here to talk about a subject that gets talked about a lot, especially just before school, which is immunizations. And uh, we're talking about the importance of immunization not just for children, but also for adults. So good morning, uh, Karen. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, good both morning. of you. Thanks nice for to us. see you both. Make sure I have your microphones turned on. Uh, you, know, I'm all, you know how you know you're old when you got that mark? You guys are too young. You don't have that mark, right? I just missed it. You just missed it? You might be way too young. <laughs> no way. You look way too young to have just missed it. <laughs> so when did they stop doing it? What was that for again? That, that smallpox. Smallpox? Yeah. The shot, the shot. You don't, you know what I'm talking about, right? How come, we, how come it left a scar? How come we don't get him anymore? Well, they divided it up. The smallpox vaccine was given with multiple shots all at once. Actually, uh, my wife has the shot. Uh, she was in Germany, in East Germany, and they did it all there. And she's got the big old mark right, up, right on, oh the, my. on the side there. But uh, then they started to divide it up and give it into uh, multiple syringes, multiple, multiple needles. I, I guess the kids would argue that's not adv- advantageous, you know, mm-hmm. multiple shots, but um, that is what it is. But yeah, and the mark is still quite prevalent in medicine. Huh, huh. Yeah. So, uh, so, but, but we still have vaccines, obviously. Mm-hmm. Do we ever do them on sugar cubes anymore? I remember that as a kid, too. The oral polio. Yeah. Yeah, the oral polio. They still do that. Not so much sugar cubes. I think they give it now in a liquid, um, but there's also a, a shot for the polio as well. But they still do the oral polio. Mm-hmm. It's actually uh, most prevalent. And um, it's, adv- it's advantageous, and it's not advantageous as well. The oral polio um, can sometimes, uh, you've got to wash your hands when you take care of the children. It actually leaks then into the stool, and it's pretty high contagious as well. Oh. So if you haven't had the vaccine prior, then it's, um, it's quite important. But um, recently I had met a group here in Ocala, the polio group, and that was... That they're, they're, most of them are older, and a lot of them mm-hmm. have had polio or or um, are empathetic to the polio um, people that have had it, and um, their stories are are interesting. Actually, not so nice to to have polio and the side effects of polio, the musculoskeletal effects on wow, polio, wow. and um, their stories are they're very much for the polio vaccine and because they've experienced it firsthand. You would think so, right. Yeah, but right. our generation, my generation, a lot of the things that I had as a kid, I had chicken pox as a kid. 10 years I've been doing this, I had my first case probably like a a year and a half ago of Mm chicken pox. So we don't see that kind of stuff too often because of the efficacy of the vaccines and because of the worthwhileness of the vaccines. Do do we, if we don't get the vaccines, for whatever whatever reasons, we don't get them, and then we travel overseas, do we, are we possibly endangering ourselves could we find ourselves in a country like if they don't vaccine in whatever country yeah so you have to look at that at a two-pronged thing you got to actually look at not only yourself getting sick but then bringing it back bringing it back bringing it back that's right and you know um everybody has the right to choose what they want of course that's my own personal beliefs but um those folks that chose not to get the vaccines then that person comes back on the airplane and bring something over that's not typical here to the United States, you know, polio, for instance, and all of a sudden now they're at risk for contracting polio. So it, it's it's not only the, you could say the other countries, but then we bring it back and the more of the trending goes without vaccines and the concerns with vaccines. Right. And we have to be concerned about that on the home front as well. Karen, can I ask you to answer a question now? I think I know the answer, mm-hmm. so I don't want you to think I'm really that dumb. I'm pretty dumb, but I, but, <laughs> but, I, but you know, somebody said to me the other day, you, you dumb yourself down when you ask questions. No, I don't. I think maybe there's sometimes questions that either I don't know the real answer, I think I do, or maybe somebody else needs to hear the answer. So what is a vaccine? That's kind of where I'm going. Is it, now what I've always heard is it's like a dead 
version of the disease or something. Is it, it's helping fill in the blanks with yeah. that. I'm going to let Michael take that one for the most part because he's our, our clinical medical expert versus me. But um, for me personally, not being a clinical uh, person that works in the healthcare field and um, as Michael knows, I have a little grandbaby at home. It's uh, this. You have a become, grandbaby. Yeah, it's <laughs> I know, extremely important to me um, at home, and, and, uh, and making vaccinated. sure I don't bring yeah. something home. You know, did you to, take to the, my Did own. you take an aging vaccine, by the way, by uh, chance? There's a lot of uh, just positive thinking and sunscreen, Larry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> positive thinking and sunscreen. I should look I ten. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll let Michael tackle that specific question in more depth. So a vaccine, <clears throat> like for instance, let's take a real common one, like the flu vaccine. It's what we call a live attenuated vaccine. So it's, it's a live virus, but it's been attenuated to the point where it's been chemically altered, where it's not going to give you the full effect. So you are getting a portion, kind of a diluted, dumbed down version of the vaccine. So when you get the flu vaccine, some folks say, well, I get the flu. Well mostly not it's, if you do get the flu a lot of times it's per correlated where you probably would have gotten the flu anyway oh, I see. Right, if you right. get the flu vaccine some folks may get a little low-grade fever a little soreness at the shot uh, the shot site like in the shoulder um but you you do get the vac the, the the actual virus and that's what um your body's responding to and once it responds to that the next time it sees it say you get the flu vaccine two weeks later you're uh, I don't know walking through the store or whatever and somebody coughs in the air and you walk through it and they happen to have the flu your body responds to that and says well wait a minute I, I've seen this I've I know what this virus is I can respond to it a lot stronger than just getting the full-out flu mm -hmm. and that's why we do the vaccines but the vaccines are important because the flu kills the flu kills our elderly it kills small children it kills those folks that have underlying uh, medical right, right, right. underlying medical diagnosis so heart issues lung issues other kidney issues all the other organs and that's where the influenza becomes becomes deadly wow. and that's why we do the vaccinations. Do good voices run in your family? Uh, yeah, I mean, your mother has one of the best voices. Yeah, I know you know my mom quite well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Karen, have, have you heard his mother's voice? I don't believe so. No? Oh. You met my mom. No, oh, no, I, I have it on tape. Oh, you, okay. could, you could hear it. Maybe you, after the show, that'd be lovely. No, no, let me play it right now. Let me play it right now. Let me play it right now. Can you put your headset on? I'll show you. Uh, this is your mother, Marsha. I had her do this for me. You ready for this? You're going to love this. Good morning, Larry. Did you hear? <laughs> Did you hear? I had her do that for me. Good morning, Larry. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't it nice? Well, yes. that's not what yeah. I remember as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was nice. Really that was nice, Mom. Soothing. That was very nice. And, and, of course, your dad wasn't jealous at all. He was, he was very no. good about it. I, oh, he came no. in one day and did an interview also. And yeah. I, to, I said to Robin, I, I hope I didn't cross the line with yeah. that one. <laughs> no, he was really good. Uh, so I had a vaccine. <laughs> yeah, he was okay. A jealousy vaccine. No. Uh, well, how, how do you handle the calls from parents when they're debating whether to give their children the vaccine or not because they don't want it to turn into something mm -hmm. bad? You want me to take that one? Absolutely. So this comes up often. <clears throat> it comes up, up often in clinical practice, and I understand it completely. I'm a father myself. Yeah. You want to do what's best for your kids. You want to do best what's for your kids for the long term. You right. Set right. them up for problems. Um, matter of fact, yesterday I called a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Jennifer Elder at the University of Florida. She's uh, one of the premier autism researchers at the University of Florida in the College of Nursing. And I asked her, I said, what do you, what do you tell your clientele? What do you tell your families? She said, there has been no, um, there's no correlation with these vaccines causing autism. She gave me a website, AutismSpeaks.com, and she says, go read it up. And I, re I went through it. I went through the CDC. There's been no correlation with these things. So there have been major concerns from real sham science. It was a bogus science from a, a doctor in England who published a lot of stuff that was fake and almost created this epidemic scare. And this epidemic scare has just taken over the uh, vaccine in the pediatric world. 
But uh, she said as far as autism goes, there's no correlation with anything causing autism. So mm-hmm. one of the things there she said, that she st- tells her families, don't worry about it as far as the autism perspective. So there must be some autistic children that never, never had a vaccine. So Yes, of course. There must be. So, uh, so uh, Karen, when you are, do, you, do you organize the, uh, the vaccinations at the hospital? Do, you, do they come to the hospital for the vaccines? They'll typically come to our outpatient clinic um, to receive the vaccines um, for adults as uh, healthcare workers or any of us that work within the facility, uh, we get our annual flu shots. Uh, we want to protect our patients and any visitors and our coworkers that come in. So we oh, get our gosh, shots yes. there. I forgot about that uh, part of what you have to do. Right. Yeah. Physicians can come in also and uh, receive their shots there. Um, the community, typically they'll go to one of our clinics. Uh, Michael's at one of our urgent care clinics down in Bellevue. I'll provide the address and how to get a hold of them. Um, folks can walk in. Uh, really, uh, they can make an appointment either via phone or going to one of our websites, or um, they take walk-ins as well. Right, and, uh, right, they right. also have a primary care component. Um, did, did the uh, the health care laws that changed under President Obama did that make it easier for you as as medical providers in, as far as vaccines go? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm guessing some people stayed away because they couldn't afford it. Now they maybe can. I don't know. Is it, did it change anything? I mean, there's always been some different options for vaccinations for for folks that the financial oh, so component even, would so be a before? hindrance. So prior okay. to that, um, there's Not there's make, always been options for them. Well, so. even before Obamacare uh, in the state of Florida, um, all of the vaccines were covered. Oh, okay. um, they were okay. covered by by um, Florida laws. Um, I know the same is the case in South Carolina. When I lived in South Carolina as well, my son, you know, got his vaccines and it was part of your pediatric care. Right, right, so right. I don't know that it's changed too much as far as that goes. And that's always been important for health care. Yeah. So we have to take a little break and uh, take a breather. We'll be right back. I have the weather and a few commercial announcements and then we'll be back. Karen Young is here and Michael Bumbach is here. They are talking about the importance of immunizations for adults and children. And uh, they are both from Ocala Regional Medical Center and Urgent Care at Family Care Specialist in Bellevue. Is that where you are? Uh, and also uh, West Marion. You, so you go back and forth to both hospitals? I do. That's why you look so young. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Sunshine mixing with clouds today. Watch out for a thunderstorm during the afternoon and evening hours. High today, 88 to 92. Then partly cloudy overnight, though, 73 to 77. Times of clouds and sun tomorrow with a shower or thunderstorm popping up in the afternoon. The high, 88 to 92. For Saturday, intervals of clouds and sun with a couple of showers and thunderstorms around in the afternoon. High, 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Ah, ouch. Does pain have you glued to the couch? Yes, unfortunately it's true that every year we must get older, but that doesn't mean we have to deal with pain in our back, knees, or shoulder. If your muscles and joints are sore, don't worry anymore. Come get acupuncture from me and you'll be pain-free. Acupuncture starts as low as $35 at a Better You Healthcare. Call me, Dr. Erica Olstein, at 615-5566. Stop your pain from driving you insane. Good credits, bad credits, it's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSale.com, Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSale.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer charge. Undercoding rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. Do you have areas that have started sagging or drooping? Is what you're looking at not quite the same as it was years ago? Are there enhancements you've been putting off? Is there serious damage you need fixed? Then call on us, Damage Control Services. When your roof is sagging and the drywall is drooping after a storm, or your home just needs some enhancements, from damage repairs to new construction, Damage Control Services is here to help. I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. 
What are the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking? Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Pozenet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch Planning for a Better and Safer Retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. All right, 20 minutes after uh, 11 o'clock. Wow, the morning is oh, almost done already. Okay. Uh, Michael it's Bombach is here. Mike is a nurse practitioner of urgent care at Family Care Specialists in Bellevue, and Karen Young is here and just amazing us with her beauty and look and youthful looks, Thanks. in spite of being a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> She's the director of business development at Ocala Health, That's Ocala Regional Medical Center. Who is it? That's my new name. That's, what new name? Grandma. 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 <laughs> you love that name, though, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Everyone how many, at how many, uh, Ocala Health knows how much I love that How many <laughs> grandchildren do you have? <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. A good one. Yes. There yes. you go. Fantastic. Wow. All right. The importance of immunizations is what we're talking about. So has your grandchild had immunizations yet? Or was it too young? Uh, yes. He, he, she. Uh, they get an initial um, vaccine in the hospital now, actually. So so right after they're born? He's uh, almost two months, so uh, come Tuesday. And I'll let Michael kind of walk through the gamut, but uh, he's two months today so he has an appointment next week and uh, grandma might sit that one out <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, we're, so we're getting ready to go back to school and i know there are certain rules about immunizations for students going back to school mm -hmm. and i've often thought the, the the uh the ones who hold out i don't know what happens do the children not go to school how does that work out when a parent says i don't want I, you don't know yeah, um, if I know right, I'm not totally certain on the education system, the education portion of it, but I believe there's a waiver you have to sign to get your kid into school. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, I, I always thought it was for the... Uh, like, the other kids would be the ones who would suffer, right? Or, or no? I mean, if we can There's a couple controversial thoughts about it, but the most part we think about is kind of what we call the herd immunity, where a lot of folks are choosing not to do the immunizations with the potential of the concern with risk. Mm -hmm. So the herd immunity essentially says that, well, if the herd, if everybody else has their immunizations, my child should be fine. Oh. So, you know, there's... Oh. there's pros and cons associated with that. And it's yeah, but until they go to the airport and they're walking past somebody who sneezes who happens to have that thing because they live in a country that doesn't do immunizations. Right. And that's the major concern. That's the major concern with these things. What are we immune against? Uh, what do we immun immunize against? That's the word, right? Yeah. So, actually, i got a couple good resources here. For pediatric immunizations, there's a, a list. Chickenpox, diphtheria, um, the Hib, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, flu, measles, mumps, pertussis. That's a really big one. Pertussis, especially for little, little babies. And that's like um, breaking out now because we'll have news stories every once in a while saying that pertussis is on the rampage. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's really never gone away totally. Um, polio, pneumococcal, rotavirus, rubella, and tetanus. Tetanus is a very common one. Other things it, it didn't have on here was influenza. Influenza is oh. your annual um, vaccine. And I can't stress that enough. I've seen folks come into the clinic and they're just, they're floored. They're, they're, they're on the table. They're sweating. They're throwing up. Oh, man. Oh, gee. All the other stuff that happens we won't talk about it. but it, they're just they're out and you can tell you can tell that these folks are sick they run in high fevers their body aches they can hardly pull themselves off the stretcher and that's one of the first things we test for all right let's test for the flu and actually here in florida it's a unique environment we get a lot of passerby a lot of visitors so mm -hmm. a lot of folks that come in from all sorts of different environments right, in right. the summertime my, i used in college i used to work over at disney we got a lot of brazilians a lot of south americans it was their time but it was also their flu time in the summertime oh because south america was colder uh -huh. so then they would come up north and they'd bring you know the flu with them where it's not our typical right. flu season right. so here in florida we tend to have this kind of steady state of flu and it definitely peaks around february march as well mm -hmm. yeah. so we see a lot of that and we see unfortunately a lot even here in ocala and, and bellevue or even mm -hmm. smaller town down there so when you drive down the road sometimes you'll see a, um, a health place saying we have uh immuniz immuniz or vaccines for um shingles, shingles. Mm -hmm. shingles? like walgreens they'll have it on their market. so is that something we need to get or is that something that's op that we I opt in for highly recommend you do it. recommend really? it. i do i am um, uh, if you've had chicken pox 
I think I have. Yeah, yeah. I have. So even I had. I had chicken pox when I was mm-hmm. six, right? So that's the um, uh, herpes vac- uh, virus. It, it lays in your body the rest of your life. It sits in your spine. Really? So once you got chicken pox, it's there forever. Oh. So in times of immunity. How did they uh, get herpes when I was a kid? What was I doing? Like chicken yeah. pox. <laughs> There's different strains of the herpes virus. Okay. So chicken pox has to be, you know, mainly common in the kids. But because of that, that puts you at a higher risk for getting shingles later on. So what the shingles vaccine does, it reduces the prevalence, they say, by about 50 to 60 percent of getting that, of getting shingles later on. If you ever had shingles or have known somebody that had shingles, right. it's absolutely miserable. It's a miserable, painful But rash. you won't get chicken pox again. No, you won't get chicken pox because that's a childhood manifestation. The adult manifestation is shingles. So do you give people chicken pox or you have it all your life? I mean, could I give somebody chicken pox? In times of outbreak. So chicken pox and shingles is associated with a rash, and that is little, what we call vesicles or fluid-filled vesicles, Mm -hmm. that's the contagious portion of it. Mm -hmm. So if you... Why do they call it shingles? Heck if I know. I don't know. (laughs) Just, I mean, a picture of a roof. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Shingles, you said, should people get it? I did a little research on CDC. It said, you know, adults, about one in three have the potential to get it. So it's... um, One in three. That means... very painful from... At least one of us, because there's four of us in here. those that I've known that have had that. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we encourage folks to come by one of our urgent care clinics, or uh, we have seven primary uh, care uh, offices as well, and get their... Uh, vaccines for the kids, but the adults too. Their their shingles, their pneumonia, their influenza. And if something new to me was the DTAP. You know, Michael mentioned the pertussis, and, mm-hmm. and you did as well. Uh, and that was something kind of new to me. Adults needing to go back and yeah, get a right. DTAP yeah. if uh, yeah. you're going to be around a small a small child because uh, yeah, pertussis. It's very annoying for us. Is yeah. you know a terrible cough, but um, yeah. it can be deadly for an infant. So, so if it, if an adult goes for a uh, flu vaccine do they get shingles at the same time the, the the vaccine for that do they get them all at one time typically not no is it okay to get more than one at a time um i haven't read anything that says that it's not okay, okay. Mm-hmm. um kids get vaccines more than one at a time all the time yeah. kids got little bodies so the adult bodies should be able to handle that um usually we kind of space it out just kind of give the body a little time to rest mm-hmm. up and um give it some time to kind of uh, get through the the first shot, but mm-hmm. um, so let me ask you this. Yeah. And, and I, I've often wondered this: when you see a pharmacy offering uh, vaccines, is that the same vaccine as I'd get at the hospital, or is, are there good ones and better ones? Uh, it should be the same vaccine. Okay. Oh, yeah. Really? Usually, there's only a small m- amount of manufacturers. Even as we heard this year, so the manufacturers pr- um, they'll send out the vaccine. It's the, it's the vaccine, and it's the CDC actually regionalizes it as well. So they they okay. do their testing. They say what strain is most common in the southeast, northeast, west. Is that, isn't that amazing that they even know that? Yeah, that's cool science. <laughs> that's cool stuff. So they know in in advance, like the H one N one. Right. Yeah. The, I the didn't even know what, flu. The, the Heine. Oh, one. was that the, the yeah, Heine? Heine? I thought it was yeah. pronounced Heine. I saw <laughs> I it on. Know, I saw it on C. This. I, I saw it on the CVS sign. Yeah. It said H one N one. I thought it was H I N I. I said, "What is the Heine virus? Yeah, what is that?" I know that was great. Because yeah. <laughs> I think I had it once. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a variety of places. You know, you can get the vaccines. We try to make it just as easy, um, especially at our urgent care centers, for folks just to walk in and get those uh, as well. And if they need to get anything else checked out at the same time, they certainly can. So, can is is everything covered under insurance? I know you had said earlier that you know Florida, you have to, you know they. You know, we'll give you all the vaccines, but is everything covered under insurance? The pediatric vaccines are covered, um, mm-hmm. usually covered with the um, uh, the Florida laws. Uh, Medicare covers the no routine immunization. So sometimes folks, even younger, have Medicare, but they do cover tetanus with a wound. you got to have a wound for that. Oh. Um, pneumonia shot, influenza, and the shingles shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, regular insurances cover the vaccines. Mm-hmm. Oh, Okay. Um, we're almost out of time, so let's give out some um, contact information and maybe a, a, a line that people can call for more, with more questions. Absolutely. So um, if you would like to come in and see Michael, he's located at our uh, Bellevue uh, Family Care Specialist Urgent Care, and I'll give you the address. It's 4850 Southeast 110th Street in Bellevue. Uh, phone number is 233 233- Two three six zero Ocala Health FCS dot com or OcalaHealthSystem dot com. Uh, folks can also make appointments online. 
uh, if they'd like to. At Ocala Health, we also um, offer a health care hotline that anyone can call in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, speak to a registered nurse if they have specific questions about a variety of health care topics, or um, we offer different courses that uh, folks can sign up for, or different seminars All right. uh, on a variety of topics as well. And uh, also find out what physicians uh, specialize if they need a, a, a certain type of appointment. Good information. And what, what is that number? Uh, that number is 1-800-530-1188. Thank you. Karen <laughs> Karen Young, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. You're a joy. Uh, Michael Bumbach, thank you for coming in. You're with a, a great family. Nice thank to, you. Nice to meet yeah, you. I love and my family. <laughs> the best one yet. <laughs> best one, right? Thank you both. Thank and call, you. call us if you need that. And, of course, you can play the uh, the video for anybody who might be benefiting from it. Thank you. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. GOP presidential hopefuls are gearing up for the first big debate of the 2016 campaign. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland reports that while frontrunner Donald Trump will be taking center stage... There are nine other candidates to watch during the 9 p.m. Eastern debate, and they're all getting equal time. Senator Marco Rubio. A lot of people for the first time are going to start